everybody, it's Ryan Metzler here again, and today we're going to take a look at a very small little card game in the rabbit line of card games from Dice Hate Me Games. We're going to take a look at Brew Crafters, the travel card game. Now this is a game by Ben Rossett, and as I said, it's in the Dice Hate Me line, and it's meant to be a very small card game that you can just kind of take out and play, but have a decent amount of strategy with. Uh, it tries to follow the Euro style of play, and real quick, we'll see if it manages to do that by taking a look at what's going to be included in this game. We'll see how it plays, and we'll come back here at the end and get my opinion on Brew Crafters, the travel card game. So here you can see the components for Brew Crafters, the travel card game, which is a small game in the rabbit line of games from Dice Hate Me, which they released not too long ago uh, via crowdfunding and are now hopefully available to everyone. Uh, so this is a game in which you're, of course, trying to make your own brewery and then trying to brew the best beer in order to get enough reputation to win. Each player will get an equal number of turns, but the first player to 21 reputation will trigger the end of the game. Uh, and then if there's been an equal or unequal number of turns taken, each player will get their final turn in order to try and score more than 21. Now, each player will start with the same kind of parts of their area. You're going to have a card that tells you the constituents of the deck. So there are 14 malt, 14 hop, 10 yeast, four fruit, and four coffee cards in this deck. In addition, it tells you that any two cards that are identical but can be used as a wild as any other ingredient in the game. You're also going to have the other side of this card here that tells you how you make each of the beers and how many points each of those beers is worth. So for example, an ale takes a yeast, two hops, and a wheat in order to make, and it's going to get you three points, three reputation. Whereas porters take more wheat, less hops, but the same amount of yeast and give you the same amount of points. And this goes all the way up to the special reserve, which takes two yeast, or sorry, one yeast, two wheat, two hops, a coffee, and a fruit in order to make, but is worth six points. So the more complex beers you make, the more points you'll earn. Each player will also start the game with four cards, and cards will have a very similar layout uh, amongst all of them. So this one here shows an ingredient at the top left-hand corner, in this case, hops, uh, but we could have yeast or fruit, and of course we have another yeast here. Each card will either be an equipment or it will be a worker. Now, depending on which one it is, you may earn bonus points at the end of the game for specific cards you can play in your brewery. But each card will either be used as an ingredient or as the equipment or worker that's printed on the card. These cards at the bottom will have effects. For example, the mash ton here says that you may use one less wheat for each of the coffee, stout, or special reserves that you're making. Or something like the oak barrel house says that you get extra reputation anytime you make a porter or a coffee, stout, or a special reserve. Now you may want to combine some of these cards out in your area when you play them into your brewery in order to use less ingredients and earn more points. And you'll want to pay attention to combos like that throughout the game in order to best score. You'll also see that there are workers here. Workers are kind of the same type of card, but special cards let you score for each worker or each equipment you have in your area. This one says you get plus one for either the ales or the lambics that you have, uh, sorry, ales or lambics that you make throughout the game. So getting this out before you make those types of beers will earn you more reserve, or more um, reputation. Now on your turn, you're going to follow a very specific turn order. The first thing you're gonna do is you get to draw two cards, either because you want them for the ingredients or because you happen to want the ability of that card. So you can take these off at the top of the deck or from any of these five face-up cards. Perhaps you want this fruit and you like the ability of the boil kettle, so you take this into your hand. You would then replenish these so that the next player has five cards to choose from or from the top of the deck. After you've done this, you're going to take one action on your turn, and that can be one of three things. The first thing you can do is you can play cards in order to make a beer, and you would discard all the necessary ingredients, remembering that you can use two of the same type as a wild for any other one, in order to get reputation. So if I had a wheat, two hops, and a yeast, I could discard those cards in order to make that beer and get three points, marking them on my reputation track. Likewise, if I had all of these, I could discard them in order to get six points, six reputation, moving me six closer to the 21 that I need. Instead of discarding cards to do this, you may play a card from your hand to put it into your brewery. For example, maybe I want to use less hops for each of the lambics and each of the special reserves that I want to make, and I would simply play this into my area. It would no longer be a yeast, but it would have, I would have this ability for the rest of the game. It's important to note that you never can have two of the same cards uh, with the same name in an area, so you can't stack these abilities, but different cards will work together synergistically in order to give you special abilities that will make things easier to brew or give you more points. 
after you've either brewed your beer, placed your thing out here, or just decided to pass, uh, you would look and see if you have seven cards or more in your hand. If you have more than seven cards, you must discard down to seven. Thus, it's good to play cards if you happen to have a lot of them in your hand. And then you would pass the turn to the next player, who would do the same thing likewise, drawing two cards, taking their action of either, of either playing a piece of equipment or a worker, or playing a beer or passing, and again, discarding down to seven and passing it to the next player. This will go on in this manner until somebody manages to, eat, to reach 21 reputation by making different types of beers and perhaps getting point bonuses from special cards they have played to the table as they make them. When they do this, they'll check and see if every other player has had an equal number of turns, and if they have, the game will end immediately. But if they haven't, each player gets to finish out the round so that each player has an equal number of turns in order to try and pass 21 and score the most. At the end of the game, whoever's managed to score the most points will, of course, be the best brew crafter and will win the game by having the best reputation. I'd like to note that the game does play two to four players. Two and three player games will play exactly like I've just described them. There will be some special cards at the end of the game that give you points for each equipment or each worker you've installed in your brewery if you happen to have played them out as one of your items in that brewery. In the four-player game, the players will work as pairs or teams. Each player will have a teammate. They'll be working to build the same brewery and will be able to pass a card between those players towards uh, the end of each round before the discarding part. So once they've played their action, they can pass a card before their turn ends so that their opponent or their partner, I should say, can use that on their turn. Likewise, they'll be trying to scare, uh, share a 21-point reputation in order to reach that point and win the game. So. It's the same type of play style, but between a team instead of individual players. Regardless, the first team or individual player to pass 21 and have the most victory points at the end of that round will be the winner. Well, there you have it. That is Brew Crafters, the travel card game. And as you may have guessed from the name and the fact that it's a very small footprint uh, and my introductory comments, this is a very simple game, but I didn't really expect anything more than that based on what this line of games is. Uh, you have a few choices to make each turn. How would you like to draw your cards? And then how would you like to play them, either as items in your brewery or for making beer? Uh, that's really the extent of it, but it's how you plan that out, how you draw your cards, what information you give to your opponents, and the combos that you're able to make with those cards that's going to give you strategy in that game. And it accomplishes this fairly well. It's not my favorite game, it's not an outstanding game, but I think for a travel game it does a very good job of simulating a Euro-style game with very few components, and I, I have to give it kudos for that. I'm looking forward to the full game of Brew Crafters, which is not yet available, or at least I don't think it's available, I haven't seen it. Uh, but games about beer are fun, I like travel games, I like easy to play games, uh, and so I'm excited for that as well. But if you're looking for a quick fix, a game about beer, uh, and something you can travel with, I can suggest taking a look at this one, this one. it may very well be to your tastes, uh, and I think there are a lot of players out there who are going to really enjoy it. So if that sounds good to you, check it out, Brew Crafters, the travel card game from Dice Hate Me Games. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock.